Hey, this is Seth, and in this video, I want to share with you my approach and my trick to feeling more grateful, even when you don't want to feel grateful. Um, gratitude, we all know, is an incredibly powerful emotion, not only just to feel good, but it also impacts your mindset and how you perform in life and the kinds of, you know, how your day goes and the things you attract into your life. Um, if you look around, everybody knows the positive benefits of being grateful, but so why are there videos on YouTube called How to Be More Grateful? It's because most of us have a really hard time being grateful consistently. And I'm going to dig into why that is and, again, a hack that I have to get around that so you can actually start feeling grateful a lot quicker uh, than you normally would. So, you know, gratitude is the feeling of um, being very thankful for something your life. And the funny thing is, like even, you know, I teach people how to get jobs in digital marketing and careers, they find out if people have a positive attitude and they're grateful for what they're learning, they're excited, they're enthusiastic, they tend to get faster results versus a person who might be focusing on what's negative and what isn't working and what isn't, they're not grateful for in their life. Um, but, you know, myself included, sometimes I get, it, get into a bad mood or you feel like, you have a bad day or you just maybe even feel a bit depressed about things. I mean, there's a lot going on in the world and people have had a tough time and it's, you know, I don't like videos where the people are just like, oh, just put a smile on your face and think positive. It's just too superficial. You know, you can't slap a smile on your face and pretend that you're not feeling complex emotions about what's going on in the world. Um, and so another thing that can often happen with gratitude is people, you might say, well, you might mentally start to compare yourself and say, well, I have it better you know, that's good. It's a good start. You would say, well, I have it better than people who are experiencing things now like war or poverty or something like that. But the mental, me mentally doing that in and of itself is not very effective. Um, so I'm going to break down a couple of distinctions. I want to get you clear on a couple of things. It's going to make it a lot easier for you to access the feeling and the experience of gratitude. Um, so the first thing I wanted to distinguish is the fact that uh, people collapse gratitude and appreciation. So my experience, gratitude is like, it's like happiness. Now there are some people who say that you can like create and practice happiness, but I think that's BS. Ha true happiness is uh, an experience that happens to you. It is the result of having created space in your awareness and your consciousness such that the happiness kind of washes over you. It's this very spiritual thing in my experience. And gratitude is the same thing. Um, you can't force a feeling of gratitude. In fact, the more, you know, if you're, if you're feeling selfish and you had a bad day and you're just in a bad mood and, and you're trying to make yourself, oh, I should be so grateful for my awesome, amazing life. <laughs> you're not gonna get there. Um, or you could be in a situation like one of my students where you know you might have like a great family, a great relationship, you know, you, you, you have a good, um, you know, really good friends, but you're having struggles in your career, then you tend to only be able to focus on that one thing that isn't working in your life. And the mind at this point is like a little child. You know, it really is the child part of our mind that gets like this, that cannot see what there is to be uh, grateful for in our life, to be appreciative for in our life. Because children are not grateful. You know, if you have kids, you know, I mean, they're wonderful. We love them. But kids, a three-year-old doesn't have appreciation or gratitude for things. They just get, they're, if they're angry, they yell. If they're hungry, they scream. If they're happy, they laugh. They don't have an appreciation. They don't experience gratitude the way that an adult can. And a lot of times us, we get locked into that child part of our mind and our emotions. And that's why it's so hard to get out of it. So, going back to what I was saying before, um, I wanted to distinguish between gratitude and appreciation. So again, if you try to force the feeling of gratitude, it's almost like trying to make a child feel grateful or happy. You, you know, you can't force a child to do anything. I mean, you can, you can obviously discipline them, but you know, you can't, they're going to cry if they're going to cry. Um, and we're the same way, even as adults. But what you can, so you don't want to try to force the feeling of gratitude. What you want to do is focus on appreciation because appreciation is actually more of a mental psychological state. Um, it literally clears a space inside of yourself. You have to think about the times in your life when you've wanted to be grateful, but you weren't. Probably you weren't feeling good. You were feeling depressed. You might have been feeling angry. You might have been feeling resentful about things. You can't pivot right from there to the feeling of gratitude. There's so much stuff in the way. There's whatever I said, the anger, the resentment. Um, unfulfillment, whatever it might be. You have to actually create some space and that's what appreciation is for. Now appreciation, again, you don't have to feel anything. You don't have to put any pressure on yourself. You just have to start literally appreciating, um, seeing clearly the things around you or the things that you want to appreciate. For instance, like this is the exercise that I recommend. 
um, that I think is really cool. So one of the things I like to do when I'm feeling like, like uh, I need to be more grateful and I'm not, is I like to think about life in the 1800s, my grandparents, or not my, my, my great-great-grandparents, you know, or I watch a Western about what life was like a long time ago before we had any technology, back when people didn't have washing machines, they didn't even have cars, you know, people going to settle the west coast, the west part of the United States would just die, like most people would just die just trying to get to the Pacific Ocean. Because there was so much that we take for granted that they didn't have, right? Now, mentally, again, that's that, that's helpful sometimes, but mostly it's just another mental construct where you go, oh yeah, yeah, we have a lot better than people did before, blah, blah, blah. I still don't feel grateful, you know, this sucks. Um, but here's the exercise that I like to do. Uh, first of all, again, you don't take the pressure off yourself to feel grateful. Don't try to be grateful. Just try to appreciate the things I'm going to be telling you to focus on. Now, the main thing that I want you to also do is um, you're going to be using your creative analytical problem solving side of your brain. So this takes it out this gives your mind something to do. Um, so one of the things that I learned from a businessman a while, like 10 years ago, was just like, in your house, right now, there is so much more happening under the surface that you have any awareness of. Now you could say that scientifically too. We could look at like the ultraviolet light spectrum and see like this, or the cells in our body. We can't see any of that. And we never think about that. But there's all these processes happening. Um, sustaining us, keeping us alive that we never ever appreciate or we're just not aware of them. And I'm not even going to have you look at those. But what I want you to do is look around your house right now. Make it physical, make it real. And look at even, it could be anything. It could be your cell phone. It could be something in your kitchen, the plates in your kitchen, your table, the door on your house. Um, no matter if you have a big house, a small house, you have a lot of things, you don't have a lot of things. I don't have a ton of stuff here. But what I like to do is I'll look at, say, the kitchen sink, right? And I'm just like trying to think about all the people that have contributed to make all of the stuff I have possible. Like the sink, right? The sink is a faucet. And I'm like, you know, back in the 1800s, they didn't even have faucets. You literally had a well and you had to like, if you wanted a bath, you had to like go to the well and put the water in a bucket and like pour the bucket in. If you wanted to wash something, like a dish or something, you had like a basin and you couldn't just, you know, flip a switch and water magically comes out. Now, I don't look at this, when I do this exercise, I don't look at it as a obli you know, obligation or guilt or, oh, I have it so much better so I should appreciate and it should feel good. I just try to use the left side of my brain, the analytical side of my brain, the, and, and along with the right side, like the problem-solving side of my brain, the creative side of my brain. It's like, God, how many people contributed to that water faucet? Like, what was the science? Like, I don't, and I'll look it up on Wikipedia. I'll be like, what was the history of the faucet? You know, who came up with the technology that figured out you could have water move through pipes and the, the, the water pump? You know, what was it like back in the old days where you had to physically pump it? And, you know, how many people, hundreds or thousands of people contributed to this? It's, it's not even usually just one person. Even with the automobile, with Henry Ford is credited as, you know, inventing the automobile. But there were other inventors that contributed all the different technologies that went into the automobile, which is a whole other thing. But just starting with the sink. And I look at the sink and I'm like, and then look at all the the, the faucet itself, someone had to design the faucet. And then who built the faucet? Oh my God, there's a factory somewhere in the world. I don't even know, probably in China. But somebody had to design the faucet and manufacture it. And who designed it? Who put it together? And then someone had to ship the faucet here where I am in my villa. And someone had to assemble it when they were building this place. And you could go on and on like this. It's actually really crazy. Like you look, I mean, a cell phone is like, could take you hours to appreciate all the stuff from the physical material of the cell phone to the technology inside the cell phone to all the different apps inside the cell phone to all the soldering that went into putting the circuits in there to the history of the circuit to the original computer who invented the original computer <laughs> how did it, microchips become so small who are all the scientists and you know um, engineers behind this particular technology who invented all these different apps and you get and I get in there I go to Google Maps and I'm like now we talk about GPS oh my god satellites in the sky who invented that what material are the satellites made of and that's that's even crazier out there you can come right back into your house and look at like who who made the door who invented the idea of a door you know and who the hinges who built the hinges where did they actually come from like physically like did they come from a factory in China where did the material come from what about the wood the wood in this villa the wood in your house or the metal on the the handles uh, of your house like go crazy <laughs> let your mind focus on this 
not again, not to try, try to force you to have a feeling or an experience, or to pre, you know, or to be grat grateful. Just appreciate. Literally, appreciation, guys, is not like, oh, I appreciate you. It's not a manufactured emotion. Literally, you just become present to something. It's like this. It's like when I look at what my parents did for me when I was younger. Many times I think when I was like six or something and I was dealing with my six-year-old problems, I couldn't appreciate my parents, the fact that they were stressing out about money or career. They had their own problems to deal with while they were taking care of me, you know, providing me with food and, and um, you know, entertainment and whatever else they gave to me as a kid. As a kid, you don't appreciate that. You don't see it clearly at all. You just think about your own needs and what I need and stuff like that um, for the most part. Um, as an adult, I look back and I'm like, oh my God, I have all this perspective. Look at what, you know, these guys, these people were dealing with and they were still able to take care of me. I really appreciate that. And it's not even like I said, I don't feel guilty about it. I just see with much wider perspective. So the whole point of this exercise is to widen your perspective and appreciate all the different technologies. And I want you to keep it on the level of the physical and the technological. Don't bring it into your life yet. This is the other problem I've seen with some of these gratitude exercises. People will say, um, they're not bad exercises, but they'll say like, think of something in your life that if you didn't have it, you, you know, your life would be bad. And that's an okay exercise, but if you're in a state, I know this guys, because I've been depressed, I've been negative, and we've all been there. When your mind is really stuck in a negative place, or even just like a uninspired place, then if, if you make the exercise about yourself, your mind will find a way to screw it up. They might, you know, it's like, it's like that movie, It's a Wonderful Life, right? You know, I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's a classic. It's about the guy who's going to kill himself because he lost all the money in the town. It's a classic Christmas movie. But then he has a vision from an angel and shows him what everyone's life would have been like if he was never born because he wishes he was never born. And he sees, oh my God, I made such a difference for all these people. It's beautiful. It's heartwarming. It's moving. But you have to understand, in the movie, it's very accurate. He went through a whole movie <laughs> to see that in three dimensions. The, the, it, 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 he was, nobody was able to come up to him and say, hey, you know, you should just be grateful because if you were never born, all these cool things wouldn't have happened. Like, they couldn't just say it. He had to have a three-dimensional experience of it. Um, and I'm bringing that up because, yeah, I know a lot of us struggle. We try to, like, mm, I should be appreciative for this, and I know I should be grateful for that, and if only this had... I know I met the love of my life three years ago, and life has been great since then, and we're married, we have kids, but I still feel ungrateful. <laughs> you know, you can't trick yourself. But as long, if... You can't trick yourself if you are part of the equation because you're, now it's self-referential. You're too self-absorbed and the entire, the entire process is too self-absorbed. But if you just start thinking about the stuff in your house, it just it becomes very scientific, very left, even left brain to begin with. And you start becoming aware of the multitude of people and um, you know, technologies and effort that has gone into supplying just the stuff in your house. Like I was thinking about, like I've had all this stuff shipped here from Lazada, which is like Amazon. I mean, what about all the people that are shipping these things to me? You know, the people that are driving the trucks or they're flying the planes and they're taking the package from point A to point Z. And what about the packaging itself, the box itself? Who made the box? You know, who made the, for my vitamins? Who made the, the container for the vitamins? And I, again, I'm not saying this is a guilty oblig obligatory, like, oh, I should feel so grateful because all these people did all this hard work. I'm just like, holy cow, look how big this process is. And by the time I do this for a while, um, I you know I've kind of forgotten why <laughs> I might not have been grateful. I'm just aware and appreciative. I'm like, oh my God, I am so fortunate to have all these different, you know, technologies and processes in the history of like, it said everything from, you know, indoor plumbing to transportation and jet planes that fly me, my stupid, you know, um, uh, tennis balls or whatever I want flown in when I order them online. And then, you know, you can do the whole thing with the internet too. I mean, it's crazy. The internet, this, you know, instantaneous communication with anyone on the planet and the ability to process payments and purchase things and, and share, share yourself and connect with loved ones. It's, it's crazy. But um, that's what I do. And again, I take it out of the realm of I should feel grateful or right, that. Just appreciate all of the, re the facts of what's around you and how it got there. And you could, you could write spreadsheets or like mind maps, you know, mind mapping everything from like a tennis racket to a, uh, the flooring <laughs> in your house, you know, to the, the, your garage door opener, the washing machines or refrigerators. I was looking at that. I was like refrigeration. You know, there was a time when there was no refrigeration. You had to like, People had to just like hunt for their food um, or the food would go bad. 
Um, and you know, you can keep stuff in your refrigerator for days and days. It gets shipped with refrigerated trucks. Um, it's amazing. It's amazing the world we live in that we take for granted. I know I'm focusing completely externally on technology. And it's really because, yeah, if you start to try to get into, I should be so appreciative of life. I should feel love. I should feel, if you try to go there immediately, your mind will just crush it. <laughs> you can't do it. it, it and then so you get a lot of people in the whole positive thinking movement that are just really fake. And that's, I think, why, you know, I like to take you a little bit deeper because, you know, if you're walking around, you're like, I am so appreciative for life and this other thing. It's like, if you haven't actually gone into a place where you're really appreciating things and you've gotten your, your mind on board, <laughs> then you're just going to be faking it. But if you really sit down and really t like write down all of the different processes and all the different elements of the physical stuff around you in your house, even if you have a, a small house, you don't have that many possessions, like literally the building itself that you're sitting, somebody built that structure, you know, uh, my bed, I was just thinking about how grateful I am for my bed. I mean, to have a bed. I mean, there was a time when humans weren't sleeping on beds. You have like a bunch of straw. Now we have like soft beds to sleep in. And even when I've had futons or like really uncomfortable beds, it was better than sleeping on the floor. Who put all that technology together? Um, and you can go to Wikipedia and look up the history of all these things. And it's very, I think it's fascinating. It gets your mind focused on those things. And then come back to appreciation and say, wow. I, you don't even have to use words like blessed. You can say, wow, my day-to-day -day life is supported by all of these different people, technologies, and the history of this particular, you know, <laughs> from indoor plumbing to construction to technology. Um, someone had an idea that I don't know years ago that has developed into the stuff we have, or I have around me right now that allows me to have such a comfortable life that is so, and even if you think you don't have a comfortable life, that's when you can look back and be like, well, at least I don't have to wash my hands with a washboard. Um, I have refrigeration. I can bathe myself. <laughs> you know, there was a time when people didn't even bathe themselves because it was too difficult or they may not, didn't have water. Um, and then you can get into all the food, you know, that you have the ability to eat. All the people that grow the food and the farmers and the people that, you know, put the, you know, raise the animals or pick the, you know, grow the crops and ship it and then put it in the grocery store and just all the different people in between there. I mean, I mean, I get, it, it can be, it can be very positively overwhelming. You know, sometimes we get so take this stuff for granted, but I think, you know, I have, I've had times where like the power went out in my villa and I have nothing, like, it's literally like, I'm in, I'm in a tropical place. So it's super hot. So there's no air conditioning. I can't use the water because uh, the water pump isn't working, so you can't turn on a faucet, you can't use the toilet, you can't use any electronics, there's no internet, and you're just sitting there. <laughs> I'm just sitting there. And the food's starting to go bad in the fridge, and thankfully, you know, I could go out or I could order something, and it, you know, you have these delivery apps, and I, you know, sometimes I get food delivery, and I just think, Gee, oh my god, how comfortable is this, that I can like just press a button, someone brings me this food, it's been prepared for me, somebody grew the food, cut it up, flavored it so that it's enjoyable for me to eat, and I get to eat it. I mean, then I just get naturally grateful. If I put the efforts, you put the effort into the appreciation. Now you could do this with your families too. I mean, I said start with something objective, like again, some, some material thing in your house. It's a lot easier. If you're having a fight or a conflict with somebody in your relationship, or you're having problems with your career, um, or you're, you know, you're, you're frustrated because of the job search or something, it's hard to start out with that right away. But start with something that's objective, like a material object. Then go to your loved one, um, and, and then see if you can do the same thing and think about, oh, you remember they did this thing for me, this. Look at them as the three-dimensional thing in the same way, like, What's their experience? What was their day like? What's their history like? What's, you know, what's their experience in terms of their challenges? Um, you know, um, this is one of the reasons too, like when I teach people about ser uh, job searching, I teach them f to have a perspective of the employer because most people just walk in to a job without any perspective or appreciation of the, what the employer is offering and what their concerns are. And say so if you take this appreciation thing and build it out even further and you look at the, um, what the concerns of are the employer, the appreciation for the job they're offering, for the services they provide, for the human being that's actually interviewing you, you just have a more, uh, a more enjoyable and more positive experience. You can take this process and apply it to the, the humans in your life. 
You know, I've had to do that, you know, I've done that a lot. I've worked with, you know, my parents and I didn't always have the best relationships. And a lot of that was my responsibility. And I spent a lot of time really appreciating them and seeing, you know, what their experience was as humans, not just from my perspective. And it was almost like with the, the faucet, you're like, well, what, what was it like for my dad as a child? What was it like for my mom as a child? What is their mindset? Why are they thinking this way? Why are they saying, you know, they may be saying things I don't agree with, but where are they coming from? Um, and then appreciating, you know, really being aware of and, understanding that and is the more appreciative you get I think the more calm you get the more relaxed you get and the more perspective and space you have and in within that space that's when gratitude can show up so uh, I hope this was helpful to you guys I had fun making it because I think creating that space is a lot of you know when I think um, when you create space there's more room for really good things to come up and um, you don't have to force it you don't have to force it because I know I spent a lot of time struggling with that too um, and now, again, I just, I just try to be appreciative. You know, I'm appreciative even now that I have the space and the time and the ability to share this knowledge with you guys. Um, let me know what you think. Was this helpful? I, I hope it was. But, you know, if you have any feedback, please leave it in the comments below. Um, I appreciate you guys. I hope you go out there and appreciate something in your life and feel some gratitude. And uh, I will see you in the next video.